this old hat, I bought it the first year that uh, I had registered cattle. And in those, that was about 1969 or 70. And this was a fine Stetson. It was a fine Stetson, but, and it's been with me thousands and thousands of miles. But like me, this old Stetson is about worn out, but it says a lot about me. I haven't changed hats, and neither have I changed the genetics of my cow herd. Uh, if you don't like my hat, that's okay. Uh, if you don't like my cattle, that's okay. But they, they are Ed Oliver. People come here, and, and the first thing I say to them is, I'm going to show you these cows, and if you like them, fine. If you don't like them, that's okay. You can't hurt my feelings. Uh, this is the way we bred them. This is the way we like them. The, this is what works for us, and uh, we continue to do it. Now, if you want to leave a check in the mailbox, well, then I might consider some of your suggestions. But uh, w we do our own thing, and we have, and we've it, we've created a unique herd of cows uh, with a wide base, and and we're not going to bring an outside bull in. Uh, we're going to continue to, to incorporate these genes we've got and, and let them take us where we need to go. If you can't put your head on your pillow at night and visualize your ideal cow, the odds of you making one are very, very slim. We just insist on, on those genes that, that are straight white from imported cattle in the uh, in the 40s, 50s, uh, we've kept them that way and, and we forced them to meet our criteria. I, I can't change, my, I, I won't change my forage program. The cows are going to have to change and adjust to what I can afford to feed them and that's, and that's grass and, and they've done it. Uh, they've made the adjustment uh, extremely well and now that we're at a point where we're using and have been using our own bull, our program is so simple, it is absolutely the most simple. It's so simple, I can't believe it. The future of these cattle are Spencer and his son Spen. Uh, my days are about like my hat. <laughs> my, day, my days are, are, are not forever. And, but I tell Spencer all the time, when we go to the pasture to look at cows, it's, it's not like looking at cows, it's like school. Uh, it's like son be taking notes. Uh, son, listen to what I'm telling you. And uh, he, nothing will change here. Spencer understands our line breeding program, and I have no doubt that he'll carry it, carry it forward. I say I left home, but I never really left home. <laughs> uh, the dinner bell still rings down here quite often, so I've, I've made my day, way down on a weekly basis. So I've never been completely out of it, but we are moving back to be closer on the day-to-day -day operation. But this community means a lot to me. Um, this has always been home to me. I want to raise my children in this same community, in this same environment, to, to know how to work, to understand what work is, and just to be around the cattle and, and be a part of something that our family created and were blessed, was blessed with and, and had the opportunity to, to care for. The greatest thing I have is my friends and, and the genetics of my cattle. I love my friends. Uh, Martha Joe said to me, I stay on the phone a lot. I'm talking to people in North Dakota, South Dakota, Montana, where, and Martha Joe, if there's anything she loses patience with, she said, Ed, you stay on the phone all the time. And I said, well, Joe, I'm talking to my friends. And she says to me, she said, well, Ed, maybe your problem is you've got too many friends. And I said, <laughs> I said well, I don't think that's possible. I don't think you can have too many friends. Uh, everything that, everything that I have or everything that, that we've accomplished has um, been a great, it had a great deal to do with the support of the people that I, that I trust and people that believe in me and what I've learned from them.